If you measure the Earth from one side to the other, it's more than 12,000 kilometers in diameter. But how much of that diameter is the crust and how much is the mantle or the core? Today we're going to explore the composition of our planet with an art project. You can print the template that we made, a piece of paper that already has markings for the core, the mantle, and the crust, or you can make your own. Whatever material you use, I hope that this art project will help you better appreciate how thin our crust is compared to the rest of the planet, and how slow pressure and movement in the mantle can cause pieces of the crust to converge, diverge, or slide past each other. I'm Math Dad. I'm Science Mom. And today, we're going to do an art project. And hello, welcome to Mimi Grace, to Cassidy from Mississippi, to Karis watching in Illinois, to Catherine and Joshua, to Noah from Utah. Happy Friday, everyone. Wayfaring scholars, Jill Snelson and Isaac, science mom, Jamie. It is good to see you guys here this morning. And today we are going to be doing another art project. And we also have a fun showcase of some of the projects that you guys have done previously in the class. But we're gonna start with just reviewing real fast what our earth is made of. So we have a crust and that's rocks. the layer on the very top that are rocks like what we see when we go outside. But if you were to dig down and deeper and deeper and deeper, it would get hotter and hotter. And in fact, this is what happens in the deepest mine in the world. One of the deepest mines of the world in, is in South Africa, it's a gold mine. And it gets so hot down a kilometer below the surface that they have to spend a lot of energy on air conditioning units that pump cooler air down uh. because it gets so hot. As you dive deeper and deeper into the crust through that layer, eventually you get to rock that is no longer brittle. That means that this rock, when you press it or bend it, instead of snapping and breaking, it can actually fold. Mm. And this foldable rock, it's still solid, but it is so hot that it can fold and bend and move is called the? The mantle. The mantle. So still a solid. Still a solid, but it's a plastic solid. That means that it can bend and move. And if we look at a diagram of our planet, in fact, we have, this is the printout that I, I've told you guys that we had. This is in the notes. You can print out this template we made, or you can make your own. If we look at a diagram of the planet, then it is, sorry, math dad, I, <laughs> that was the wrong, I pointed at the wrong thing. I blame science mom. <laughs> our crust is incredibly thin compared to our other layers. So here is the mantle, and then this line, that's the crust. Wait, 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 wait. You're saying that if this represents the Earth, so from the top all the way down to the bottom, the crust is as thin as that line at the top? Under the oceans, yes, because the, the crust under the oceans, the oceanic plates, they are very thin in comparison to the diameter of our Earth. Our Earth is more than 12,000 kilometers in diameter, and then our oceanic plates, only five kilometers thick. Whoa, wait, wait, I just wanna do that one more time. So center of the Earth, way down at the bottom here. Yes. And so we go up, we've got the inner, inner core, core, the outer core, and then the, the mantle. mantle. The crust, the part that we think of as Earth, is just that line. Just that line. And now it's just that line for the oceanic plate, but under the continents, it's a lot thicker. And let's go back to that diagram real fast because there's something cool about the continents that we'll be talking about more in the future. Continental plates, it's almost like they're floating on top of the mantle and they kind of sink in. So it's not just that you go from sea level to the tops of mountains and you think, oh, well the continental plate, if the mountain is 10,000 feet high, then the continental plate is 10,000 feet thick. No, the continental plate is a lot thicker. So quick question for you guys, that makes sense. just to see if you were listening and if you're active in the chat, you can type the answer into the chat. If you're watching the replay, just say it out, say your guess out loud. What do you think is thicker? The plate, the continental plate or the crust that is at the North Pole or the crust at the South Pole? So take a minute Ooh. and think about it. What's thicker, crust at the North Pole, crust at the South Pole? So we know that the crust is what makes up these plates, or the plates make up the crust, rather. It might be yeah. a better way of saying that. So if you but were you're to, saying the North Pole versus the South Pole, one of them has thicker One of them plates. has much thicker plates. Ah. 
So if you were to start at the South Pole or start at the North Pole and you were going to be like, okay, I'm going to dig a hole all the way through until I hit the mantle, which right. one Lexi would Amnick, be easier? Lexi and Amnick say South. Kate was saying North. Ibrahim South. Ibrahim says South. Hillary, Owen. Ooh, we have Put a clear. Along, Cassidy saying South. We have a clear favorite for the South Pole and you guys are correct. Good job, so, Xander and Amelia. Yes. yes. South Pole is much, much thicker than the North Pole because the South Pole is over, it's a continent. You have the continent of Antarctica, and not only that, the South Pole, right where it is, is at really high elevation. So there are really thick mountains oh. covered uh, then by a lot of ice at the South Pole. And that means that our continental plate could be up to 70 kilometers thick. But at the North Pole, we do not have a continent. We are over the ocean. And so if you were, if you were oh. standing on the North Pole and you said, I want to dig to the mantle, you'd have to go through about six feet of ice. And then you would go through a whole lot of water until you got to that oceanic crust. And then you would have maybe five kilometers to get through to the mantle. Whereas at the South Pole, you would have a lot of ice to dig through and you would finally get to the crust. And then you would have maybe as much as 70 kilometers of digging through the <laughs> crust. That would be a lot harder. Crazy. Yes. That's a very, very, very different. Got some asymmetry going on from the north and south ends of our planet. We definitely do. We definitely do. Now let's talk a little bit about how to do this art project. We, in fact, Math Dad, can you put this link into the chat? The, the, the link will be in the description as well. So if you're watching the replay and you're thinking, where can I get this template? We'll just have a simple link in the description where you can download just these pages so that you have a template so to use. It's in the appendix of the notes for the most part. It oh. is, but we added a new one. So if oh. you want to make a model that kind of matches our model that we made for the atmosphere, we have the inner core, the outer core, and the mantle. The crust is so thin, we didn't we didn't feel like it could... <laughs> we, we couldn't really do a thin enough layer. It's just so the edge here? It's the edge. It's the line. The line right here is the crust. So here's a little arrow that says, this is the crust, super thin. And then you should cut out these circles and label which one is liquid, which one is solid, and which one is a plastic solid. Mm. And we'll have some questions about that coming up when we do our pulls. Yeah, that, that puts it into perspective, though, just how thin that the crust is and how big the Earth is. Yes, the Earth is really big compared to compared to our crust. Now, for if you instead of doing it this version, if you want to do our single page art project layer, we want to show you a couple really cool designs you can do to fill this in. So the well, first one we're going to do is what's what, what should be the name of this math dad maybe look in the chat see if anyone has a good idea for a, a nickname for this design okay so i would call it maybe a spiral in but I, I don't know maybe maybe they've got a better name so we're going to draw straight lines but even though we're only drawing straight lines we're going to get a nice curve here's how this works you can do it with any shape i have a triangle a square and a pentagon here and no matter what side sided shape you have, this will work. That you is start at, the least square square I have ever seen. <laughs> okay, so it's a rectangle. It's a, qu a quadrilateral. I will grant you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's not even a rectangle. It's a quadrilateral. <laughs> it's a four-sided object. So you start at one corner. And then instead of drawing a line straight to the other corner, you're going to offset it. You're going to go off just a little bit. So see, I draw this line. I didn't quite go to that corner. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the next corner. I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna draw a straight line down and have it be off just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm it's gonna draw another line. It's a little weird. How's this gonna work out? So see, I'm drawing a triangle, but this triangle is a little smaller each time and it's angled a little bit more differently. And if I keep going in, and again, it's just straight line to a corner to till you meet, straight line till you meet, straight line until you meet. And I keep going in okay. and in and in. And notice how all Ooh. of a sudden it's like, whoa, it looks like we drew some curved lines <gasps> here, here, and here, even though all the lines we drew were straight. Isn't that awesome? Yep. I'm seeing yeah. shape a shape o. Shape a shape o. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I'm in a spiral web, maybe? Ooh, spiral web, I like a lot. So, spiral web design. And if you do it with a four-sided object. Ooh, now it won't work though, right? It will still work. Oh. You can use any object, but with a four-sided object, instead of having three spiral lines coming in, we'll end up with four. And again, you wanna choose a direction, whether that's clockwise or counterclockwise, 
and all you're doing is drawing straight lines that don't quite go to the opposite corner. They're gonna be inside of that corner just a little bit. And if you're drawing your, your lines and you make a mistake, that's okay. Because art is not about being perfect. Art is about expression. And when you're, when you're doing doodles like this, they're a lot of fun and they do look cool if you end up with a regular pattern. But if, if you all, you get too close to that corner and then you get too far apart from that corner, that's okay. Just keep going. Kundalini called it an optical spiral web. Ooh, optical spiral web. I like that one too. Rebecca's is a shape illusion. Spiral web, Ooh, I think, is my favorite. The chat is impressed with how straight your lines are, science mom. Oh, why, thank you very much. No, I had to go to college for years and years to learn how to draw straight lines like that, right? You know, really, <laughs> really the trick is instead of drawing with your wrist, draw with your arm. Oh. So if you, if you keep your wrist straight and I'm moving my entire arm, then I have a little bit better control for, I don't know, I, the straight lines work a little bit better than if I'm trying to go like that to do my straight lines. Okay, so there is our spiral web pattern. That is pattern number one. Okay, I, I like that. That is, is fun. So you in our art project, we're coloring in the different layers. Of yes, your and we're, just for fun, we're showing you a couple different doodles that you can do in your layers. And which layers you, you doodle in is totally up to you. You can just color them straight colors if you want, but if you want to do some doodles, I think this one is a particularly fun one for the mantle. And let me show you really quick what happens if you alternate directions versus if you go the same directions each time. Because I just showed you with this paper, I showed you three different shapes and doing a spiral web in each one. But what if we have shapes that are right next to each other? Ooh, in a grid. Yes. So here is a time-lapse video where I'm doing squares and I'm making all of them counterclockwise. And look what happens as we fill in more than one grid. It looks like we have these interlocking <coughs> spirals of columns. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So they look like columns and we have columns going one direction, columns going another direction, looks, and they're all, all kind 3D. of yeah. looped into each other. And the cool thing about this is it has so much curve to it, but we didn't draw any curved lines. We just drew straight all lines. straight lines. Yeah. Okay, that's fascinating. This time, instead of going clockwise in each square, I'm going to alternate. And I know it's going kind of fast, but here's all I'm doing is going clockwise in one, counterclockwise in the other. Now I go counterclockwise. This next one I go clockwise. Uh huh. Going clockwise. And Ooh. then I skipped a square and went clockwise because that was easier because each time I had to stop and think like, okay, which direction do I go? So we get kind of like fans, like seashells yeah. or something. Yeah, it almost kind of does look like interlocking seashells or something. Huh, I like that. And of course, if you if you mix it up, like sometimes they're going clockwise and sometimes not, then you'll get kind of a fun combination of some of them will look like columns and some of them will have that point. And sometimes it's a surprise. You might think you're you're making one pattern and then all of a sudden say, oh, that pattern is looking different than how I expected. So I gotta say, when you're in a boring meeting, <laughs> having some doodling to do can be a lot of fun. Or, yes, yeah. this this is an excellent skill to have because if you are ever waiting somewhere and you have paper and pen, you have so much entertainment just right here with your paper and pen. And especially if you are in a boring meeting, this is a great way to, I, I think it helps me like, listen better actually. If I'm, if I'm kind of having trouble paying attention and I can just give my hand something to doodle with, uh, I listen a little better. That's interesting. Now there's another pattern that I wanna show you. And this I, I call lava art, but maybe those of you watching live in the chat, if you have a, another name suggestion, just put it in. Mm. What we're going to do is make a grid and then make bubbles. So see, I, I drew wavy lines down and then made X's through them. And I'm just trying to make a lot of different lines that intersect. And now when I draw inside them, I'm just making that shape curve. And it looks sort of like a stained glass window. Now, when you're filling out your, your bubble art this way or your lava art, you're just drawing a round shape inside those lines. And you'll notice that if you make your shape really round, you end up with a lot of empty space. You can fill that in with some smaller bubbles. There are no rules with this art of here's the way that you have to do it. You can be creative and try new things. But that's another pattern that I thought was really fun. 
and worked well for the magma layer if you want to, to do it that way. And then for our bottom layer, and let's just here come and show, show this view right now. For the bottom layer, because inner core and outer core both start with C, I thought it would be kind of fun to make a pattern of interlocking Cs. So I made a C here, and then I turned the next one backwards. And if you alternate your Cs, and there are directions on page 64 for how to do this, I have kind of step-by-step -step directions, then you end up with a, a pattern that kind of looks like weaving, where things are going in and out from each other. OK, that, that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to do it right here real quick. So, and ooh, Wayfaring Scholar suggests giraffe art for the, the, the one with the bubbles. I uh, like that. Yeah, that totally looks like a giraffe. So just like if I did a C, and then you, you just kind of alternated your Cs like this. Mm -hmm. And Science Mom Jamie says that she knits during meetings. And I got to say, knitting knitting is really good, too. I always doodle during oh. me, 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 meetings, but knitting and just having something that your hands can be doing well, it's really, really nice. If you can make a cool hat or something during a meeting or that's even, you always know you accomplished something. That's even better than a doodle. <laughs> All right, so I did the C's back to back, and then I kind of do them sideways now. So I C up, and then I say C down. Definitely. And Adeline wants to know, can we create our own patterns? Absolutely. We're showing you a couple suggestions of things that you could do, but this is your art project. You can make it any way that you would like. The only guideline that we have that I think you really should do is to try and make the distance representative of just how thick our mantle is compared to the inner core and the outer core. So if you're doing it, you know, this version where you make the 3D model, you want your mantle circle to be a lot bigger than your outer core and your inner core. And if you're doing it with the paper, like the template the math dad is drawing on right now, um, there's uh, on page 64, we tell you where you should put your line for the difference between the different layers. Oh. Give me a fun zigzag pattern here. Very nice, Math Dad. Oh, so I, I could just stack them like this. You a, can. A whole chain of Cs that are just alternating direction. Yep. That's pr pr pretty neat how such simple patterns can become more complex. Yeah, th this is a great example of how a simple pattern at first can develop and look a lot more complex once you get more of them put in together. Like and if you remember with our, our stratosphere um, and mesosphere with our layers of the atmosphere art project, we had a pattern that was made out of S's. You can even interlock S's and C's together and invent your own new pattern. Super fun. All right. It look, totally looks like I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> are, you, are you ready for a quick little art showcase? Should we show some of the, the material that's been coming in? Yeah, let's do it. OK, we're going to talk real quick about some of the previous art projects that we did and show you guys like quick little mini art showcase. And then we've got some questions for you guys, some poll questions. And we even pre-recorded another um, victory dance for the undefeatable science kids because I am 100% sure that you guys are going to win. Well, well it's been, maybe in a few weeks they'll win again, and then we'll use it then. <laughs> All right, let's pull up our, our slideshow. So we we had several awesome um, submissions with people sending in pictures of their spaghetti bridges. And we loved this one, Abigail. Nice job. Got the marshmallows yeah. in there. And Owen and Kiaran. Fabulous work Kieran, with these yeah. bridges with yeah, yeah. Owen and Kieran. Nice. And they, they did some really good testing with different designs. Nice yeah. work here, Caleb. Well, I loved hearing about the, the hypotheses. And I mean, you just wouldn't think that spaghetti could hold much, but it, it really can, especially I, with hot glue. I was oh, impressed. This mnemonic, <laughs> Isaac, was one of our favorites that we saw. We had so many great suggestions for mnemonics, but more vicious enemies may just sneak up now. So, Mercury, Venus, <laughs> Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Awesome. Yeah, well, and we forgot your art, but that, that that was that's probably the best mnemonic I've ever heard. And then back to our um, quadramas. We really loved seeing all of the different work done with the quadramas. So if you if you made art and would like to show us what you what you did, go ahead and send it in. And then last but not least, our mason jar biomes. It has been really fun to see your pictures and the different experiments that have done. We've seen so many different experiments, mostly light versus dark, but people have done compost layer versus no compost layer, and even you know music versus no music. There've been a lot of really fun variables. 
but I wanted to share real fast a short little clip from Kian with their results. It is day seven, and this is the jar that had the puck light on it for the last seven days. It is day seven, and this is the jar that has been in the closet for the last seven days. And this jar will go out in the sun. So what happened in this experiment was this jar that had been in the, with this uh, puck light on it, it was growing towards the, our little sun, we'll call it. And this jar was tucked away in the closet without this light. So what happened was all these plants in here thought they were still underground, but they weren't underground. Uh, but they're not underground. They just thought that because it was dark. Here's some data I collected. The tallest plant in the dark jar got to be two and a half inches tall. The tallest plant in the light jar got to be one inch long. In my opinion, the light jar got to be a lot healthier. This is a graph, graph I made on healthiness. And I absolutely loved this graph. Didn't you think you did a great job with this? Yes. So they both started out neutral. And then you can see as time went on, the plants with light are looking very healthy and the plants without light are not looking so healthy. So way to go, Kian. Yeah. Great job with this. This was awesome. We're way impressed. And before we pull up our polls, I do have a really quick math dad. I do have a where in the world mystery for you. Okay. So our Where in the World Mysteries, we have been doing, um, I got the wrong page. Oh no, that's embarrassing, Matt Dad. Yeah, Dr. Pay Science. Man. <laughs> you can look it up in the notes. But we've been doing cities, and the clue for this one is that it is the capital of Argentina. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the capital of Argentina. Oh man, that's a really good clue. Um, um, what, how are your geography skills, Math Dad? <laughs> okay, now I've got it pulled up. South America. Page um, 58, Argentina's capital. The tango is its native dance, the birthplace of Pope Francis. Its name means good air. Uh, and if you can... Um, oh, I know it now. Thank goodness for that last clue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and show this. Let's show this to you real fast. I mean, it, it, it sounds plausible. At least I have a, a better... Shelly's got it. It's Buenos, Buenos Aires. Aires. Yeah. Yep. And Night Slayer's got it. So here, here we have our little matching game with where in the world are these these items? And then once you've matched them all, because we've covered them all in class now, Wait, you can which, see which if you Buenos can Aires? put them on the map. So Buenos Aires is I'm looking upside down and having a hard time. It's this one right here. So it's got a cool Capitol building, that awesome bridge that has uh -huh. a very unique design. So when we were doing our spaghetti bridges, I, if anyone wanted to do a, a bridge after the model of this Buenos Aires bridge, that's a cool modern yeah. design. And then now you can see if you can match them to this map of the world. The so most that's some, not the type of map I've ever seen before. Well, yeah, so this, this map is cool because it can actually be tiled. So if you have a whole bunch of them, you can tile them together and the edges all match up. But we have a little note up here about the Mercator map, which is the most common map in the world. It really distorts things. It makes it look like Greenland is the size of Antarctica. Greenland is most definitely not the size of Africa. Sorry, I said Antarctica before. I meant Africa. Hmm. All right. So that's that wraps up page 50, 58 and 59. And now we are ready for polls. All right, so go to itempool.com slash science mom slash live and prepare to be defeated. Dun, 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 dun. Or right. prepare to see Math Dad's victory dance for the unbeatable science kids because they're unbeatable. All right, question one. Where is the crust thinnest? Is it over the oceanic plates, over continental plates, or Cleveland? <laughs> Cleveland, hmm. No hint, science mom. <laughs> All right, what do you think, Kaladin? What do you think? I think he sees that I put a treat on your shoulder and he's like, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna get it. And what I want to know is, can he get it if I put it up on your head? What? What do you think, Kaladin? Can you get it? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna finish and reveal. Over oceanic plates is correct. Nicely, Nicely done, done, you guys. 
Next question. All right. The lava from most volcanoes comes from the mantle. True or false? Ooh. This is what is happening? He got it. <laughs> <laughs> there is a treat on your head and science puppy got it. All right. They're not going to get this one right, science mom. Uh, I think they will. But you know what? We have quite a few birthdays because next week is spring break. So we have no class next week. And I want to wish a very happy birthday to Ailish, who turns 10 on March 12th, to Kaylee, Today. who turns 11 tomorrow, and to Sophia, who turned 9 on Wednesday, and her brother Joshua, who turned 10 last week, and to Elliot McGill, who will turn 10 on Monday. Yay. We hope you guys had, have, and will have very happy birthdays. And a special shout out to Ailish, who turns 10 today. Happy yep. birthday. And it hadn't occurred to me we didn't have class next week. But we actually do have a couple oh, of do. birthdays coming up next week that I. Del Delphia turns eight on Monday. Happy birthday. And, and um, Davina has a birthday next week as well. So happy birthday, everyone. And chat said <gasps> true. <gasps> dun dun. It's this one's false. Let's uh, get your get your little wiggle out for your victory right now, Math Dad, because this one is actually a little bit of a tricky question because it depends on how you interpret it. So, does <laughs> does the lava come from the mantle? Like, do you have the mantle rock actually oozing all the way through the crust and coming out? No. Mm -hmm. So, if you were thinking of it in that way, the the mantle rock is breaking all the way through a crack in the crust and then coming out. That is not correct. That's not how volcanoes work. And we will be talking about this more when we get back from spring break. The mantle is our first lesson, solid, right? Yes, our first lesson is all about volcanoes. Remember, the mantle is a plastic solid. It is not liquid. But you could interpret this that the heat from the mantle is what creates the melt or the lava that then is in volcanoes. And that would technically be correct. So it depends on how you were thinking of it. But Whatever, math... they got it wrong. I got it right. <laughs> but Math Dad did get a victory dance, and he's very happy about that. All right. Back to the polls. Question number three. What is the inner core made of? So we've got various options. Silicon, carbon, iron, nitrogen, nickel. So select all that apply. Hmm. You know what I should do? I should make a question where none of the answers are right. They're just all wrong. So no, that would be called uh, cheating, Math Dad. No, because that, that, if anybody <laughs> voted even one time for the wrong, wrong answers, then they'd be wrong. <laughs> That's not allowed. <laughs> hey, Cal. Oh. <laughs> he got it. He got the treat. Good job, Bobby. Uh, I'm seeing two categories leading out, one in particular. Ooh, iron and nickel have the most votes, and that is correct. Our inner core. Although we haven't been able to go and take a sample of it because that would be impossible. But the inner core, we think, is mostly made of iron and nickel. So Re really mostly those, those iron. Are, those are heavy metals and they're magnetic. They're heavy and they are magnetic. Yep. All right. Question four. How fast do continents move? About as fast as your fingernails grow? About as fast as a snail? About as fast as a person can walk? Or about as fast as a cheetah runs? Guess what, Math Dad? We have another birthday. Devin Yates has a birthday this next Tuesday. Hey, happy, happy birthday, birthday Devin. Devin. And then Creative Koala would like to know why is lava red? And this is a good question. And my, my best answer would be I'm not entirely sure. I would have to do a little bit of research to find out. But here are a couple of my thoughts. Number one is that it's red because it is so hot and it's giving off so much energy in the form of heat that some of that energy is actually visible. Oh, so kind of like a toaster. Yeah, kind of like the toaster elements. When they get really hot, they glow red. I think lava is the similar, a similar way. But oh. why is it red and not another color? And That's, and if, if you took away the heat somehow that didn't have the, that light coming out, would it be a different color? Really interesting question there. Quick creative koala. All right, finishing up here, about as fast as your fingernails grow. Oh, they knocked this one out of the park. Yeah, it didn't stump many people here. Good job. All right. Next question. Earth's magnetic field is caused by convection currents in the mantle, the motion of the outer core, energy pulses from the inner core, or the thinner crust at the north and south poles. Hmm. What creates the magnetic field? Earth does have a magnetic field. 
It does indeed. And that magnetic field is super important to protecting us. If we did not have magnetic field, we would have lost most of our atmosphere by now because the radiation from the sun would have blown a lot of it into space. Got lots of votes for different categories here, Science Bomb. This could be another one where I stump them. I don't think you're going to stump them. Uh, so that that thing we had that happened before Matt that that's called a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen again. Let's go ahead and finish and reveal. Oh, the votes are coming in. My victory's growing here. I see what one category is starting to get bigger. We we know I'm going to crush them now. I All don't right. think so. And oh, they said energy pulses from the inner core. And that's not right. No, they didn't. They said the motion of the outer core. You marked the wrong answer, I think. No, no, no. no. They oh. chose option C. Oh, you're I, right. I chose the correct option. Hmm. Science mom didn't even believe in me, you guys. <laughs> she, she assumed I got it wrong and that you got it right. Oh, like, how could the unbeatable science kids choose the wrong answer? They're unbeatable. Oh, no, no. We just have to rename them the, the, the beaten science kids. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. <laughs> so let's, let's go here and talk about this one real fast. So it is the motion of the outer core that actually creates the magnetic field. And this so, so that, is that's really the, cool. The molten core, it's, it's liquid. Yes. So remember, magnetism and electricity, those are related. So this flashlight right here, it does not have a plug into the, the wall. And it does not have a big battery that it's getting energy from. It gets its energy from the motion of a magnet spinning. So if I spin this, oh, the <laughs> magnet spinning creates an electric current. But the opposite can happen too. If you have an electric current passing through elements of iron and nickel, you can actually create magnetism. You can create a magnetic field. And that's what happens in the core of our planet. It's really a pretty cool, pretty cool idea. Yeah, it is. So the spinning of the outer core, that's what creates our magnetic field. All right. Question six. Which planet has the shortest day? Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, or what was the, what was the uh, mnemonic? Yeah. Oh, it we've was... got lots of good ones. In fact, I saw a really good one in the in the chat from Aaron. My very entertaining mop just um, slapped us now. <laughs> <laughs> I would not want to mop with that mop. But the, that mnemonic is not going to help you answer this question. Yep. Which planet has the shortest day? And I see two planets getting a lot of votes here. And, and I have to say, I saw some comments in the chat where some kids were like, why, how are we losing? It, it's all just for fun. As long as you're learning, that's what counts. I don't, so, I don't know, Science Mom. I think they just got lucky <laughs> in the past. And... Math Dad really enjoys competition and is having a lot of fun with this. But uh, no one should be feeling too bad because what matters most is are you learning? And I hope that all of you will remember the mantle is solid because that's one of the biggest misconceptions. It's a solid that moves. Super close here. I'm going to finish and reveal the answer is Jupiter. Ah. Woohoo! So, so the second most votes was actually Mercury. Mercury has... Spins really slowly. So it had the second longest day, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe not, not quite as long as the day on Venus, but... Yeah. Mercury yeah. and Venus both spin really slowly and it's crazy how fast Jupiter spins. A day on Jupiter is only about nine hours. Nine and a half hours. All right. Good Question job. Question number seven. Which planets have volcanoes, either extinct or volcanoes or active volcanoes? And Matt, Dad, I got to point out, even though you did manage to stump the unbeatable science kids twice, they still have gotten more answers right. I almost stumped them on that last one, science No, mom. no. So they, they are still technically winning because they've gotten more answers correct. And this is another one coming right up. Oh, you think they're going to get this one, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. No, no. Which planets have volcanoes, either extinct volcanoes or active volcanoes? Only select the ones that have volcanoes. All right. Let's go ahead and finish and reveal. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. So the rocky planets. The rocky planets. That is correct. So the Jupiter and Saturn are the gas giants. No volcanoes there because there's no crust for lava to come through. And then Uranus and Neptune, we call them ice giants. Yep, no volcanoes there either. All right, so they, they got lucky on that one. Okay. Ooh, which planet oh, has the most moons? This oh, is our last question. S s sorry, singular, which planet has the most moons? And in all honesty, we think we know the answer, but... Every few years, they've discovered new moons. I, 
possible we've got them all now. We, we might not. But it's possible the answer could change in a few years if they discover a few more moons around. Yeah, they're, but huh. they're, they're two planets that both have a lot of moons. Huh. And it's, when you think about it, it's kind of crazy. To think a moon's so big, you'd know about it, but some of them are not so big. And yeah. The, several are big, but yeah, there a lot of these are smaller, not perfectly round. Oh, we've got two planets that are tied. <gasps> oh my goodness, they are tied. Oh. They're still tied. Okay. And finish. The answer, oh, they got it right. Saturn. Saturn. Nicely done. And the second most, Jupiter. So currently, it's believed that so Saturn has 82 moons and that Jupiter has 79. And if you actually look on the NASA website, some of them are listed as provisional. So they, they need to, to verify more, make sure that they would actually classify as a moon. But yeah, so uh, yeah, it, really interesting that it's 79 moons or 82 moons for Saturn. That's a lot. Huge. I almost got you guys again. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't think so. I'm real fast. Um, a shout out to my science moms because um, one of them took the time to look this up about why lava is red. So it's red simply just because it's hot. And if you get anything hot enough, you can actually excite some of the outer electrons so that they are released as photons of light. But when mm. I say hot enough, I mean like more than more than a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Really, really hot to get it hot enough that then it will glow just because you've excited those electrons so much. So hot, as, hot as a fire. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And the, the color will vary a little bit between atoms of different elements, but that is why lava glows red is because it is so hot. Yeah. Really good question there. And then there was a request. Can we show the triangle design again real quick? And we will show it real fast. In fact, I want to show you guys my, my start of coloring in my template as well. So I printed out the template just like you, you can, the one that doesn't have this pre-done. And for this top row, I'm going counterclockwise. And then for this row, I'm going clockwise. And then I started going counterclockwise again. So you can even combine the two different ways. And then I did interlocking Cs for my inner outer core and inner core. And then here one more time is the web design, the spiral web in a triangle versus a quadrilateral math pad, <laughs> <laughs> not a square. And can I call this a pentagon or since the sides are equal? Uh, no, pentagon doesn't pentagon have to have doesn't, equal sides. Doesn't yeah, have to have equal it sides. It okay, five-sided. Oh, good. To like quadrilateral, so I'm that's, safe. That's right, you're safe. I'm safe. So if it's got all equal sides and equal angles, we call it a regular polygon. A regular polygon, oh, yep. I like it. Wait, they're saying they won. Did they really get more right than I did? Well, uh, you know, Math Dad, we did film a, a little victory dance just especially <laughs> for them with you doing a Russian squat. So I think we should share that real fast. All right, all right. Because they really are unbeatable. <laughs> <laughs> And on, on, a, on a more serious note, real quick, I want to talk about the, the, so this misconception that lava is the same as the mantle. The mantle is not lava. And this is something that most, most grownups um, misunderstand. And I know a lot of geology students that when they got to geology classes in college and found out that the mantle was solid, they were like, what? I've been lied to my whole life. I thought it was liquid. I thought it was lava. And so that's, that's a very understandable mistake to make. All right, Russian squat dance. You ready? <laughs> the Russian the Russian squat dance is really challenging. So when Math Dad fell over at the end, that was like that was legitimately him falling over because his legs felt like they were on fire. Exhaustion. <laughs> Remember, there is no class next week because we have spring break. But on Tuesday of next week, we do have a live stream um, that we're doing just to kind of celebrate. It's one year since we started our quarantine series. And that quarantine series really changed our life. The reason that we're able to do an earth science class now is because that series that we did on YouTube teaching science and math lessons when schools were shut down, that connected us with so many different people and it's your guys' support, our, our registered students and our patrons. It's your support that has let us do this. And we love, we love teaching you guys. So we'll have that on Tuesday. But then we will see you again the following week to learn all about volcanoes.
work hard, grow smart, and we'll see you next time.